so today I'm going to make a quick how-to video about how to use the Hydroforce pump. Now, if you don't know what this is, it's basically a water pump that is used to straighten out motorcycle exhaust pipe dents. So you can see here, I've got my pipe off of my 2010 KTM 300 XCW, and I crashed a couple weekends back and basically completely pancaked it here. I creased the neck here, it's all mangled. So this pump basically um, is a trough, it's a water pump, it's got a pressure regulator, and then it's got a hose that connects to these custom made uh, attachments that are for your pipe. So you've got this one here, which caps the one end, and then you've got this one here that goes on the exhaust port side and it clamps onto that. And that um, allows you to create pressure inside of the pipe and pop out all the dents. But before I get to that, I wanna back up a little bit and just kind of explain how I got to this point. So I've been trying to make this video for like six months. I've owned this thing for a while. I straightened the dents out of this pipe as best I could. You can see here still fairly dented but it's like usable but it's not like as good as it could be the reason for that and what they what i didn't realize buying this pump was that the important thing that the piece of equipment that you need to own is a tig welder the reason is because most pipes once they've gotten so battered and beaten up like mine have generally have cracks in them somewhere and are generally starting to give along the seams of the weld or maybe along the points where the pipe mounts to the frame of the bike. Sometimes they can start to crack around the, the weld marks there. All the different things, all different places where these things can start to go bad. I found on my bike specifically, they like to crack right here at the neck. You can see this one's been creased several times right around in this area and it likes to crack right along here. So the first time I welded it and then I ran this pipe for a little while and then it cracked right next to it. So the first thing I did was I went and I MIG welded that one. Let's just say not all welds are created equal. And if you're not a good welder, which I'm not, and you're welding thin, I think these are stainless steel, um, you can burn through them. You can create more of a mess than uh, you started with, and it could be a whole bunch of problems. So what I did in light of not having a TIG welder and not being good enough with a MIG welder to really um, seal these, these cracks, was I went to a muffler shop and just asked them if they could do it for me. And they were like, yeah, no problem. So I paid the guy like 30 bucks and he welded up two of my pipes for me. A couple of notes of things that I learned along the way. And what I did the first time was I bought, I think it was this one. They make different sizes, right? They're 27 millimeter and 30 millimeter or something like that. I'm not exactly sure what it is. 28 millimeter. Um, that's this one that's on here. But basically what this is, it's got uh, basically teeth on it. And this thing, presses down on it. It's got a, it's got an O-ring on the inside here, right? So these rubber O-rings seal against the, the pipe and then this clamp bites down on it so it can't pop off, right? So they make these in different sizes. They're really well made, very nice pieces, but you have to get the right size for your bike. I did not, so I had to special order the other piece for my bike. Um, so anyways, now I've got multiple pieces here, which is fine. But when you buy the Hydroforce pump, it comes with one. You want to make sure you get it for the right year, make and model of your bike so that you don't have to order another part. Now getting down to um, the pipe itself, you have to do a little bit of prep work. You want to make sure that you clean the ends of these before you go and put um, the end caps on. There's a seal on this one, and you can see there's a seal on this one as well. And that's going to seal against this surface and the other one's going to seal around here. So you want to clean both of them really well. Uh, I like to use this wire brush that seems to have worked really well for me. Clean them up, make sure you get all the carbon off, all the oil, and feel around the edges to make sure there's no metal burrs uh, that are going to catch the seal because if they leak, obviously it's not going to work. So clean them up, make sure that they are burr free, and um, then you can stick the end caps on. So I got both ends cleaned up. 
Um, check them for burrs. I don't feel any real sharp edges or anything that's concerning on either end. Uh, so I'm gonna put this end cap on. Basically it's two pieces. This end's threaded into this end. And then this piece here has the rubber O-ring on it. So this piece here has basically got a lip on it and that seats into the rings where the seals go for the, the exhaust pipe. So you're gonna slide that on there like that. And then you're going to tighten these two down against the pipe and then just hand tight, torque this down. So that's not gonna go anywhere. Now what you have to do is you have to fill the pipe up with water and you want to make sure, and this is important, that the pipe is entirely filled with water all the way through the neck and that there are no air bubbles uh, in here because air compresses, right, and water does not. And if you have air in the system, right, you're very likely to create a pressurized bomb, right? If this thing were to blow up in your face, if the, a weld were to let go or, or something like that, basically the air would have to decompress and it would would explode. You want to make sure that you get all the air out of the system. So I got a handy watering can here and I'm going to dump a bunch of water in here and I'm already fucked. All right so sadly what happened uh, with this pipe was I started filling it up and I immediately saw it was starting to leak right in this spot right here uh, which any amount of leaking any hole in your pipe will be too much to build up enough pressure to start pushing out the dents. Even the small ones, like the small ones are the hardest ones to get out. You might get out a few of the big ones if, you're, if you've got like a pinhole and it's spraying or whatever, but ultimately what you really want to get to is a pipe that has absolutely no holes in it. And this one was just kind of pouring out before I ever got any pressure on it. So not gonna be able to do much with this, unfortunately. Right now I'm gonna have to figure out how to weld it yet again. Uh, I poured some water in this one got a minor seep but it doesn't seem to be leaking so I'm gonna give this one a go and, and see what happens this one is not as dented as the other one but um, yeah it definitely has some dents in it that we'll be able to check out as we put pressure on it so I've got it mostly filled up with water but like I said you got this neck here where water where air can get trapped so you want to like plug one end and then get the air to the high point and you want to make sure that there's there's no air moving around in there so you got to kind of twist it to the point where it's full and then dump more water in and just keep going at it until you are certain you've got all the air bubbles out like i can still feel one in there so the nice thing about the end cap that they provide uh, it has a bleed screw on the end of it so i'm going to go ahead and pop this on here and then just use that to get the last little bit of air out. I'm just gonna put this on here and then it's gonna pop on past the seal. The seal's pretty tight, so you just wanna make sure. It's important to note that um, your the end of your exhaust pipe here isn't uh, oblong or egg-shaped anyway, because you want it to be perfectly round so it doesn't create a cutting edge and chop your seal. There it goes. HydroForce does provide a wrench specifically for the size of this brass socket here, but I forgot to bring it with me. So I'm gonna use a crescent wrench and then a socket that is a 27 millimeter. Just tighten that down and those teeth are gonna bite. You don't need to really torque it down, just give it enough so that it's not gonna go flying on you and then you can release the bleed screw here try to get as much of that air up to the top as possible there's also a copper washer on here which you want to make sure you don't lose so that seals it and then I'm gonna pump this a few times. I've already added water here to the trough. Got water coming out the end. I'm gonna cap it. Just to be some minor seepage here. 
and maybe just a little bit right here. Hopefully it's not so bad that I can't get it to pop out the dent. Biggest dent being this one right here. That's the one I couldn't get out last time. And some of these down here, these are probably the other bad ones. Something to note is that it, with these pinholes, they're gonna spray like crazy. So I'm gonna drape that over, try to avoid the shower that I'm inevitably gonna get. I'm hitting like 650, 700. It's just not, I mean, that popped out, right? This one, please, or it's better. Take a breather and hit another set, man. Whew, okay. All right, well, I pumped as hard as I could and managed to get a few of the dents out. This one I actually couldn't get out last time. Obviously, there's still some real small dents here. Pipe's usable, but moral of the story is this pump is not exactly valuable to you unless you have a welder. What I could do at this point, I mean, they're just, they're just pinholes, right? They're just misting pressure out. And you pump as hard as you can to build up the pressure. I was getting like six to 700 PSI in there pumping, right? The pressure does just drop back down. So you can't get sustained pressure without all, absolutely every single one of the minute cracks and pinholes being closed up. This pump is great. Uh, I can't say anything bad about it. It's a quality piece of equipment. All of the, the pieces work great. Um, it's just the reality of owning it is that you have to have a welder in order to make it work. If you're doing any kind of serious riding, uh, it's unlikely that you're gonna have a pipe for very long that's just dented without any kind of cracks in it. If you were to use this and think of it more as like maintenance, so every time you get like a dent, you pop your pipe off, straighten the dent out before it gets completely mangled, like I have a habit of doing before I had this, I feel like that would work better to make the pipe, keep the pipe from getting completely mangled. It would be less likely to crack because it's not gonna be bent as an, at an, as an extreme of an angle. There we go. The other cool thing I wanted to mention about this pump is that it does give you, you have a TIG welder, it does give you the ability to look on like eBay for used pipes or even Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace and find people who are getting rid of their pipes for cheap that don't have the ability to do this. You could buy those pipes and have a new pipe. Like I bought that one, which I used for a while. I bought it for like a hundred bucks. This new FMF pipe would be like 300 easily, probably 350. This thing could absolutely be worth the money uh, if you wanted to buy used pipes and, and fix them and, and save money that way. I think it's a good buy. I definitely like owning it. I think this just gave me another excuse to tell my wife I need to buy a welder. Uh, that's really what I'm getting at. And we'll see what she says about that. So I want to depart you with the idea that you should check out our line of GoPro helmet chin mounts. These are the things that support our channel. We make these for like 70 different helmets now. Um, they're custom made for each individual helmet. Uh, they take into consider tip back angle, and all the great things that uh, you might want to have on your helmet mount. So check these out. The link will be in the description below. You can also check out our social media channels if you want to see the footage that you can get uh, with these chin mounts. Also check out our podcast where we interview um, hard enduro racers like uh, Graham Jarvis and Cody Webb. Hope you have more luck with your pipe straightening adventure than I did. That's it. Be gone.